Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to contain a review of the latest two summon showcases. We have a Galet remix ending today featuring Zayna, Irene, and Feeny. And starting tomorrow, there's a new dragon special that features a variety of light and flame element dragons. So in this video, I'll try to answer the question of whether or not you should summon, and I waited until today to post this because I really wanted to have a chance to check out Lilith's Encroaching Shadow before forming a verdict on Zayna, Irene, and Feeny. And overall, I think the answer is going to be no to not summon on this showcase. There is one adventurer on the showcase who I think is particularly good, and that's Feeny. I think she lines up well against Lilith in Phase 2, but outside of her, I don't think Irene or Zayna actually work out all that well. And so overall, I think that this is probably going to be a skip for most players. Same deal with the Dragon Special. The Dragon Special has a couple dragons on it that I think are actually pretty good against Lilith. But in the case of the Dragon Special, I just feel like they're too low equity of a showcase compared to Galas and Gala Remixes that we get with high frequency these days where you often pick up random dragons along the way anyway. So ultimately, I think both of these showcases are going to be a skip. Let's talk about Irene and Feeny's kits nevertheless, and we'll talk a little bit about Zayna, how she lines up against Lilith as well. Alright, so let's click in here to the Gala Dragalia Remix. Irene's a light close range mana caster, Feeny's a water axe, Gala Zayna, she's returning here of course, she's a light staff. Notably, she is not a healing unit, she is an attack unit, and that is very felt in Lilith's Encroaching Shadow on the harder difficulties. Alright, so let's start off with Irene, and we'll go through pretty quick here today since I know it's the last day of the showcase. Want to get this out quickly and post it for all of you who are still wondering on whether or not to summon. So as for Irene, she is a close range mana caster. Typically, there's only been a, one other one, uh, Yoshitsune, but so far they've focused on basic attacks being the primary source of their damage, and Irene is no exception. So the way that both of these androids work is that they have a mana super capacitors 2 ability. This gives them an armament gauge. The gauge fills up passively over time and can have up to two charges. In Irene's case, it fills up at a rate of 10% every one second, and uh, you use those charges to use your skills. So it's a sort of similar playstyle to Gala Alex, where both skills are going to become available at once, and you pick which one to use, and by using a skill, you deplete some of that uh, charge that was filling up passively over time. So her first skill causes Flash Burn and consumes one charge of the Armament Gauge, this is, I think, the most notable aspect of Irene. She is a source of flash burn, of which there are not many. Basically, you're looking at Rosarda and Ilya as other sources. And having double Punisher is actually pretty nice against Lilith because now that we have extra Worm Prince slots, you're often going to be able to cap out on your skill damage already. And so it's usually pretty good to have a second Punisher in, uh, in one of those mini slots. So. I think that's actually the best aspect about Irene, but this is not a high damage skill, it's just that it causes flash burn. You could share this, it only costs 4, whereas Rosarda and Ilya shared skills cost 5 to 6, so you may not be able to slot in everything that you want with those, whereas this one would only cost 4. Something to consider, but ultimately I feel like this is kind of all that Irene really does. She's not a particularly high DPS character. Her second skill, Armed 99 Overclock, also uses one charge of the armament gauge and gives her overclocked and during that her standard attacks are powered up and they get a flash burn punisher plus 15 percent effect so again this is kind of the gimmick so far of the close range mana casters doing higher standard attack damage now unfortunately unlike with rapid fire rapid fire kind of have a good niche because they do four strikes and they do a lot of overdrive damage with that combined with their gauge accelerator co-ability but standard attacks aren't exactly burning down the overdrive gauge in the way that four strikes are. So I feel like Irene could have been pretty cool as a rapid fire style because you could potentially break Lilith faster. Maybe you could break her in the light phase instead of the water phase of the fight. But as things are, I think that she's just a pretty low DPS character, mostly going to be there for flash burn. It is nice that... Uh, She's not particularly hindered by anything that Lilith does as far as Curse of Nihility. And she does have this emergency battery unit, so when her HP falls low, 
You can use up your armament gauge to restore an HP based on the amount consumed. This is pretty good with those creeping corrosion prints in an emergency scenario. Those give you 15% strength and HP but apply an extra stack of the corrosion buff. You can safely wield those when you have something like emergency battery units. But even other characters, because of how much Hildegard heals, can also use those pretty effectively. Her poison res also not that great against Lilith. Lilith causes curse, not poison, so not ideal. The one thing that I think is actually kind of interesting here, as far as Irene, is her chain co ability. So HP below 40% equals shield, up to 50% of their max HP when users when their HP drops to 40%. That's going to happen often with Corrosion, and shields are one of the things that don't get dispelled by Lilith. So I think true to her description as a defensive unit, that might be Irene's most impactful ability that she has. Causing flash burn to increase the DPS of the rest of your characters, plus occasionally throwing on this shield. A shield of this size combined with the Corrosion print that gives 15% extra HP can probably stop stuff like crossing candy and allow your team to tank it because having Hildegard's shield will often do the same. So I think that might be the best aspect about her, but despite uh, being a brand new light character just on the release of this new light and water favored content, I don't think Irene is really all that unfortunately, which is a shame because I love everything about her design and everything from the Ageless Artifice event story. All right, so let's move on quickly here to Feeny. Feeny fights for Irene, that's her reason for being. Irene means everything to her. I think that we all got that from Ageless Artifice. Love the story. Want both of them, obviously you can't have one and not have the other in your Halidom, that would just be a shame. But Feeny I think is actually very good compared to Irene. So similar to Irene, Feeny works with this armament gauge mechanic with her mana super capacitors, but her fill rate is slightly slower. So. Whereas Feeny gets 10% every second, I think that Irene gets 8% every second. So it's gonna take her 12 and a half seconds to get one of two charges on her armament gauge. The other thing that uh, sets her apart is she has this turbo unit too. Increases strength and defense by 20% and attack rate by 15% when the armament gauge has one or more charges. So if you're above one charge, if you can always keep one charge, you get this bonus. She has stun res, that is good against Lilith in phase two on master. Lilith causes stun, not burn. Her chain co ability, I don't think is gonna work. I think this gets canceled out in Master. Not 100% sure, but I believe it does, because I think at the beginning of the fight, well, whenever, uh, whenever Lilith uses her Curse of Nihility, I think that this actually does get canceled out because it's visible in the fight. And then defense plus 15%, which is gonna help with survival against stuff like Candy Crossing, and Death Sweet Embrace, those attacks, the AI is not as good at dodging. A lot of the other attacks can be iframed or avoided completely, but some of those attacks the AI struggles with, so that's probably going to be a little relevant there. The other thing that's relevant for AI survival in the water phase of Lilith if the fight goes long is Feeny is one of the very few water units who can dispel, so her first skill, Armed 72 Fast Break, you need one armament gauge to use it. It consumes that charge, and then um, it dispels one buff from the target, does a good amount of damage. It's shareable, but the shared skill cost is really high. Probably do not want to share this, but bringing Feeny herself to the battle, she's very good. So having access to dispel outside of Lapis, it's pretty much non-present in the water element, so that will increase your survival chances. If you're struggling to clear, if you're going longer in your clears, that is pretty good. And then Arm 24 Astro Burst is also interesting here. So this one consumes the entire armament gauge, deals damage to surrounding enemies, and if the skill hits enemies six or more times during the same combo, increases the armament gauge skill fill rate. So the way that works, or not skill fill rate, but the, the fill rate of the armament gauge. So normally the armament gauge fills 8% every second, and if you get uh, this increase, it's an additional 8% for uh, for 30 seconds. So your skills feel twice as fast for 30 seconds and every six seconds or so you're going to get your skills uh, or one charge of the armament gauge to use your skills basically. So it's certainly good if you can land this but the caveat is well so one thing is there's two different versions if you have a full two gate uh, charges on your gauge you get to use a more powerful version if you don't use the weaker version. 
With the weaker version, it only hits four times, and you have to hit six or more times to get the skill, uh, to get the gauge fill rate increase. So with this weaker version, unless you're hitting Lilith and her wings at the same time, you're never going to hit more than four times on this, so you're not going to get the bonus. So I think what you want to do is get two, two charges in your armament gauge, then use this. It's going to hit eight times. You're going to get the bonus from that point on to your charge rate of your gauge. It's going to double effectively. And then you can use your gauge on your first skill as needed to dispel. You can keep one or more charges to get the bonus until that 30 seconds runs out and then you can do it again. I think that's probably going to be the playstyle that you want to go with with Feeny. You can play more defensively with her though. Like another way that you could play with her would be to use Turbo Unit 2 and just like permanently stay at at least one charge and every time you get your second charge just use it for dispel like that's a pretty safe play style if you want to take that approach with her as well but your skills are going to charge up more slowly um, if you're not trying to go for the turbo gauge fill rate off the second skill kind of a weird play style the fact that both of the skills become ready at once but in her case with arm 24 astro burst you really want to wait until you have, uh, you have two charges on your gauge to use it, unless you're fighting multiple enemies, in which case you could use it earlier. So yeah, very, very odd character, but very good, I think. The combination of Dispel, Defensiveness, High DPS, these are all things that you want to have in Lilith. And another thing to think about with these characters is their skills effectively charge up passively over time via the armament gauge. So for certain segments of the fight where you don't have good uptime, like when Lilith does Death Sweet Embrace and she does those purple slashes along with her staff that create an X on the battlefield a couple times and then she does overlapping circles, you don't really have good opportunities to attack during that. So having a character that passively accumulates their skills similar to Delphi is good in that scenario. Similarly with Sweet Circle, the pizza slice attack where she moves her staff around the battlefield and also creates those Shishimai dance wedges, often you're not going to be able to attack during that very well, so being able to passively accumulate skills to use is good. Another time that these skills are going to be good is against the prison, the candy prison, because they deal a lot of damage. The second one is also going to hit a lot of times. You could potentially rotate off the prison into Lilith and get some damage on Lilith too. So I really think that Feeny is well suited for Lilith on Master. But having said that, Lilith on Master, a lot of characters, despite being nerfed, they still work just fine. So you can throw on a Karina, you can throw on a Zanefried. The problem becomes if you let Lilith ramp too much because you don't have this spell and the fight goes long, then things can get dicey with the candy crossings, your AI can die. So, uh, so it's interesting. Feeny feels very good, but I don't think she's required. And especially if you already have Lapis, I don't think that she's a reason to pull. So ultimately with Irene not being that good, I don't think Feeny alone is enough to justify going for this showcase as good as she is. And then when it comes to Gayla Zena, well, unfortunately for her, she is an attack unit, not a dedicated healer. If you're running her as a DPS, that can be fine, that can work, but she's also significantly reduced as a DPS. But if you're running her as your only healer, that is probably not going to work in most cases against Lilith, especially on Expert and Master difficulties. So unfortunately for Gayla Zena, her Glorious Sanctuary, the healing zone doesn't work because of Curse of Nihility, the strength buff doesn't work because of Curse of Nihility, so this is just a small amount of healing on her first skill. Holy Crown, it's still going to do damage, but it doesn't increase her four strike charge rate at all. That gets cancelled out by Curse of Nihility. I'm not sure, but I don't think the Chain Co ability necessarily works, because so I do think this is a visible type of buff, but uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. And then her Hollowed Aspects works, she is going to get Twilight Moon and get her special 4 strike, but remember, you can't charge it up fast. So, all in all, uh, Lilith has significantly hampered Zayna as both a healer, because no healing zone, as well as a DPS, because you can't get a strength buff from her, you can't charge her 4 strike very fast. S sure, she has dual resistances, she still gets to do more damage based on her HP, but she, even as a DPS, like, you could run both her and Hildegard on the same team, even in that scenario, I don't think she's particularly good. So although she's the preferred healer for Tartarus, if you're running a light team, 
I don't think that she's very good against Lilith, unfortunately. Which honestly surprised me because she is a Gala character, she is a paid character that people would want to go crazy summoning for, and yet she wasn't really exempt from a lot of this debuff nonsense that uh, Lilith has going on, so, or dispel nonsense I should say, so. Yeah, Gala Zane I don't think actually matches up very well, so on this showcase it's really Feeny, and I think that's about it. Alright, so that's my take on the Gala Dragalia remix. Let's switch over to the Dragon Special and just talk about that briefly. So when it comes to the Dragon Special, again, I don't think the value is high enough to justify going for. None of these dragons are available to combine via Draconic Essences, but I do think they will be one day. And when that time comes, they're all worth it. But summoning the first copy, I don't know if you want to do it now versus just hoping to get a first copy randomly on a future Gala Showcase. When it comes to Tia Shan Gongju, She's very good on Hildegard, probably going to be your best option even compared to Jean d'Arc, the regular one that gives 60% HP because the skill haste is really relevant. The Energize is not actually going to matter too much. There are windows that you could do that in Expert uh, against Lilith and Master. It's going to be a lot harder to pull off, I think. I'm not even sure if there's a time that you can do that. So that is something to, uh, to note about her. but. The main draw to her is just this ridiculous amount of skill haste to be able to charge and cast your healing skills faster. It works well with the creeping corrosion prints that give 15% strength and 15% HP but give you an extra corrosion stack. When your other teammates have those on, you do want to have high frequency healing and Tia Shang Gongshu just has a good combination of high frequency and high amount of healing. She would also work well on buff bots but buff bots don't really work against Lilith so she might work in that capacity on like a Chitose if you take him to Tartarus, but that's about it. Alright, as for Horus, Horus, I think uh, I discussed him at length in my Dragon tier list video for Flame. The attack rate can be useful as sort of a diet skill haste for buff bots. It has some other applications like in Time Attack, lets you get off your animations faster. The critical rate can work with characters who have a high amount of critical damage, but ultimately in an element with Mars, I think that you're better off using Mars. When it comes to over damage, that scales off strength as well. So for certain healers, Horus is not even ideal. And for others, you know, your healing amount is not gonna scale off critical rate or attack rate. It scales off strength and HP. So even though with like a Halloween low end, you could cast skills faster, you're healing for a smaller amount. And ultimately I think that other dragons like Gown and Krenna, Popstar Siren are going to be a little better. Maybe in Legend this is a dragon you could consider using, but I still think Mars to power up shared skills is potentially better there. Um, so yeah, Horus I don't think is particularly great right now. And Corsian Phoenix, she's a dragon on the rise. You know, she got a lot better with Lilith because Lilith shuts down Gala Thor's energy stacking. Lilith also shuts down Lumiere Pandora from getting to 80% strength. And uh, even with Daiko Kuten, sure you can get 80% strength if you keep combo, but like the buff zone that she creates doesn't really work. So ultimately Corsair and Phoenix actually one of the better dragons that you can bring to that, especially on a backliner. Pretty good DPS dragon, Prowls is still fairly pre prevalent. Good skill here that has a cleanse, good damage, good at breaking people out of prison uh, for candy prison. Corsair and Phoenix actually pretty good dragon right about now. I don't think you want to go out of your way to Sunlight Stone her or anything, but picking up a copy and then eventually Max and Binding her, you'll be happy to have her in your collection, I feel. Still, at the end of the day, I think the Dragon Special, I'm going to say skip on it. I just think that it's not enough value. Like, you can use your Jean d'Arcs, you can use your Cupids, it's not a huge fall off. They're in the Draconic Essences, they're going to be fine for getting the job done right now. And of course, at the end of the month, we have our 2.5 year anniversary gala. We may have some collabs, who knows? So at the end of the day, I'm going to say no on both of these banners. And I think that's pretty much going to do it for this video, everyone. Definitely let me know if you decided to summon in the comments below. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.